beautiful. It is so nice to be in Melbourne, though. But hey, we've got Effie in Sydney. She's got some everyday savings that are very important than ever. She's going to tell us a bit more about them because when it comes to reward programs, it's hard to know which ones are worth it and which ones aren't. So, Effie's here. Effie, good morning to you. Good morning. It's over to you. Let's start with groceries. Yeah, well, look, it'd be pretty hard not to talk about the two biggest grocery reward uh, uh, programs out there. You've got to include, obviously, Everyday Rewards, which is Woolies, and Flybys with Coles. Now, not surprisingly, these two programs on a real basic level are the same. $1 spent gives you one point. $2,000 spent gives you that $10 value. Um, and the average household spends about $10,000 odd dollars on groceries. So if you just look at a basic formula there, you only get about $53 off for that year. It's not much. What these programs rely on is you being savvy and knowing where the bonus points are and where the partnerships are, because that's the only way you're going to amp those up. So when it comes to the big supermarkets, uh, which mm. is your pick then? Lay yeah. it on the line, Effie. No sitting on the fence here. <laughs> I will no not sit on the fence. I'm going to go out there right now. Neither of those do. Um, I would probably go for those that actually charge you money to be part of their members. So I'll give you an example. This is an everyday rewards with Woolworths. Yes, it will cost you $59 per year. But what I love about this is that it gives you 10% off every month on one shop. So using that same number again, let's say you're a household that spends about $10,000 a year on your grocery you only need to shop once there and you get that saving even after you account for that fee of $205 and the beauty about this is that you're not just wedded to one supermarket because it's only that one shop per month you can look elsewhere for other deals as well Coles has something similar but um, probably specializes more on discount delivery doesn't give you that 10% off and it's a little bit cheaper and what about that everyday shopping, you know, the basics that we put in our trolleys every day? Yeah, look, Sarah, about nine in ten of us have a rewards card. So I bet you if you opened your wallet right now, you would have a rewards card in there somewhere. And the thing is, we probably don't use them as often. And there is heaps out there. I can tell you, go to Country Road, go to Boost Juice. They've all got them. Probably the easiest way is to sign up this year, if you haven't, through a cashback site. So I had a quick look just yesterday and thought, OK, if I'm going to book a holiday, go down to Melbourne maybe for the weekend... Uh, get my car wash and buy myself a new pair of sneakers, through this platform, I would get $77 back. So they're free to sign. There are heaps out there. There is a bit of a delay in getting that cash back because they have to account for periods if you return an item. But look, it is money while you're shopping. So if you are shopping, you might as well get some cash back from them. Good on you, Effie. Thank you so much. Thanks, have a great guys. weekend. We're leaving Thanks the news Effie. at 8. While you were probably sleeping, and I was staying awake because I'm a company <laughs> man, watching the tennis. <laughs> well, bad news for renters. The number of rental vacancies set to drop even further. Vacancy rates saw a slight jump over the holiday season, but experts warn it is only temporary. Finance and business reporter Chris Collard joins us now with more. Chris, good to see you good as morning. always. Now, this is a short-lived respite, isn't it? It is, and we've been covering this issue as it's developed, and it's now an enormous problem for the one-third of Australian adults who rent. And, and you're right, there was a slight improvement in the number of properties on the market and a slight easing of the rate of increase in the cost of renting recently. Recently, but I think you're right, nobody would have noticed because mm. it's such a problem out there. All you have to do is go to an open for inspection during the week or on the weekend and find the hundreds of people who are turning up and the asking rents that are up, you know, $100 a week compared to this time it's last crazy. year is now fairly common. You're seeing these kinds of queues amazing. and it's very demoralising for people who are just trying to find a place Completely. to live. Completely. Um, what can Aussie expect then in the coming months? Unfortunately, it's going to remain pretty tight. The vacancy rate that you mentioned there is the big problem. It's under 2%. So if you consider that there's 100 rental properties, fewer than two of them are available right now. And so you get this kind of competition. Mm. And unfortunately, the rate of increase in uh, the cost of the weekly rents is also hitting record highs around the country. So it's not a particularly good market. The one piece of good news is this means that the yield on investment properties is starting to improve. And so that means that investors are going to be lured back into the market and maybe we might see a few more more rental properties coming in. That's the hope for the second half of this year. When you see queues like that outside rental properties, it's hard to believe that it could ease anywhere. But are there areas where there is some hope? Yeah, it's happening... Um, look, the... <laughs> The biggest problems are happening in the CBDs, places close to the universities as foreign students rise. I mean, the Melbourne CBD behind us, the price of renting there has gone up 33% in the wow. last 12 months. I mean, albeit from a trough. But, yeah, the, the places that are doing better right now are probably out of the major cities. Mm -hmm. um, the capital cities, particularly Melbourne and Sydney, are the biggest problems. Advice right. to renters, then? Look, uh, unfortunately, you've got to know what you're getting into. If you, yeah. if you can wait 
um, possibly don't move right now, but uh, if you're getting a notice to vacate now, it's not a particularly good time. Mm. Um, did you sleep last night? A little bit. Did you? Uh, you the didn't markets... watch the tennis? Well, look... He's watching the market, says. Was, yeah, of course. Uh, You've got to watch the overseas markets. Market. never sleep. Sorry, sleep. tennis girl. Oh, what's yeah. going on there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> I love it. Thank you, mate. Nice to Thank see you in person. All right. Um, now, obviously, when this match finished in the early hours of this morning, uh, there were plenty of cabs lined up, but cab drivers are under the pump, not just in Melbourne, but around the country, accused of price gouging with reports of charges of up to $100 for short trips. Um, Neil, do you reckon something needs to be done here? Yeah, I do. I think Jacinta Allen, the acting Premier, says, oh, everything's working beautifully. Tell that to the disabled guy who couldn't get a cab because they wouldn't take it. Tell them mm. the people paying 100 bucks to go a few hundred metres from the tennis to the CBD. It is not working. Even the Taxi Association says there are greedy drivers ripping people off. Uber is, is into surge pricing. It's been yeah. going on for more than a year. It happens for every major event we have. Bad for tourism, bad for the customers. Sort it, Premier. It's, it's, not, it's not fixed. It's not working. I know it's a big tournament, but there's plenty of traffic around too. Is, does there need to be some regulation around this, do you think? Well, I feel the cab industry's been slammed by the rise of Uber. Mm. But the cab industry doesn't help itself by this opportunistic yeah. price gouging. So there's got to be some sort of cap where, you know, if it's a short job, it's a short job. And you, you, you pick someone up late at night, sure, maybe you put a bit of a loading, but the $100 stuff's just ridiculous. It's um, piracy. Well, as we said, we're in Melbourne. It's wonderful to be here. But one of the downfalls, of course, of a massive event like this is when you want to leave, when you want to go home. Now, that we were here last yesterday and trying to leave last night. We had Uber's cancel on us. It was difficult to get a cab. What do you make of this price gouging we're seeing at the moment with the Melbourne cabbies? Some of them are charging $100 more or just not taking fares because they're so short. Well, Sarah, I'd say it's usually the, the few bad apples that spoil it for the rest. Mm. The majority of cabbies are wonderful ambassadors for our city, not only driving people around but providing lots of information and opinions, yep. all at good prices. <laughs> uh, but to those who are doing the wrong thing, they're being dealt with by the relevant authorities yep. and they, it's, it's completely un-Australian mm -hmm. to do this. So I hope they are appropriately dealt with. Mm -hmm. But can I just say Melbourne Park, the reason one of this, this tournament is so successful is there are so many transport options. Yes. So for people, please plan your trip in. Please make the use of public transport when you can. Uh, but to all those cabbies, keep doing the right thing. And Jane, you're a local girl as well. I love the trams and trains here in Melbourne. That's another option. Me too. I took the tram down here myself Easy. this morning. And, uh, and look, they do run at very late hours, which is terrific. The trams are a really great system. The train's just around the corner too. But also the parks around here, I mean, you know, walking here is a really good option too. You get to enjoy so much more of Melbourne. That's why it's, this is such a great event. Does the state government need to intervene though, do you think, to clamp down on the cabbies? Oh, I, I think that they already are. You know, it, it, Sally's right, it's entirely un-Australian. Going to the Australian Open is a really uh, you know, it's an important ritual, but it's not a cheap one. It's actually quite expensive, and I think it's unfair that cabbies are, mm. are you know, charging more than necessary uh, for people that have already spent a fair bit here at the ground. Especially when all we want to do is come here and enjoy the tennis, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> hey there, Today fans, Sarah and... <laughs> What's my name again? Oh my goodness, Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our <laughs> YouTube channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?